I'm going to show you how to make your photos look more professional and pop with the help of the Lightroom Gradient Tool. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Lightroom Gradient Tool to improve the look of your photos. This is a really simple but powerful tool that can add a lot of depth and dimension to your photos in just a few clicks. So let's get started. So first of all, what is the Gradient Tool? Well, it's now found in masking in Lightroom, if you've used Lightroom at all. And the way that I get to that is if I'm in my editing panel, I just click on this circle over here or hit M for masking, and it brings me into the masking section, which is where we have two gradient tools, the linear gradient tool and the radial gradient tool. Now, these tools help you make more targeted adjustments to a range that you define. You're gonna see that here in just a second. There's a lot of ways to use them and I'm gonna show you the three most common ways. So the first way is using light to draw attention towards or away from something. So let's check that out, all right? Here's a photo I took in Colorado. The sky's a little bit too bright for me. My attention's being drawn away from the main subject, which is the road. So I'm gonna click on the linear gradient tool and I'm going to click and drag and it's gonna start bringing down this gradient. Now, anywhere it's red is where it's going to affect whatever changes we're gonna make here. You can adjust this by making it more of a hard gradient or a softer gradient by bringing it back. Okay, and I think I'm gonna bring it down just like that. And then I'm gonna come over to my light panel and I am going to drop the highlights because that's what I'm seeing the most in the sky right now. So if I drop that all the way down, look, how much more drama is in the sky. I'll do before and after by clicking the eyeball up here, before and after, look at that. A lot more drama. Now I think I can go a little further. So I'm gonna drop the exposure just a little bit. Not much, because if I go too far, it looks unrealistic, right? So I'm gonna drop it just a touch like that. And I'll do before and after. Look at the difference right there. Now, if I want to play around, since I've made multiple adjustments, instead of having to like do them all again. If I just want to come to the amount slider, if I slide it to the left, that gives me my before. Middle is after, but if I want to add more of everything I've done, which I think I'm going to do, I'm going to slide it a little bit to the right. And then again, look at the before and the after. We've got a much more dramatic sky. All right, let's learn the radial gradient tool. A photo I took in, on Lake Geneva in Switzerland. It looks pretty good, but I want the tree to pop a little more. I think it's a little bit too dark in some areas. So I'm gonna create a radial gradient this time. And all I'm gonna do is drag, click and drag a shape, which is generally round. And I can move it with the hand tool. And I can also change the shape of it by using these handles here to get just the tree generally, okay? Now, uh, and I can also use these handles if I want to change, you know, how how much of a fade there is. But I think it's good the way it is. And I'm going to start with the shadows. Now that does something, but not much. So I think I'm going to play with the highlights just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. And then maybe bring up the exposure just a little. All right, now that's what's really affecting it, but I have to be careful not to go too far, otherwise it obviously looks unrealistic. So I'll bring that back, and I'll just kind of bring it up just a touch. Now look at the before and after of just the tree. That's before and that's after. It's definitely making it pop more. But in this case, I also want to darken the background just a little because I feel like the tree needs more attention on it. So I'm gonna draw attention away from the rest of the photo, and I'm gonna do that by very quickly and easily creating an inversion of the mask I have by right clicking on this mask and choosing to duplicate and invert the mask. Now I've got everything but the tree or generally the tree because you can see the red around that. So I'll very quickly come in here and drop the highlights a little bit somewhere where I think it looks relatively realistic and then I'll drop the exposure just a touch, not overdoing it. And look at the before and after of the entire photo now, right? Look how kind of dark, darker the tree was, and now it really pops in this photo, okay? Now let's put some of the things we've learned together by using some gradient 
tools again, but showing you how you can replicate a gradient tool um, without having to just go create another one. Okay, so I'll very quickly create a linear gradient here on the shrub area because I feel like this is a little bit too um, light and I want to draw attention to the boardwalk more. Okay, now if you you can always change the angle of your gradient by clicking and dragging here. And I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna come over here and drop the shadows. And that's already looking good. Now, I need to do the same thing to the other side, right? The shrubs over here. So what I'm gonna do, instead of creating a new mask and remembering what value I chose here, I'm going to click add, and then I can add another linear gradient which is going to copy the same exact value that I already put in. So if I had made multiple adjustments, this is especially useful if you're making multiple slider adjustments. All right, and if I do the eyeball, you can see both sides now are affected. So that's a wonderful way for you to be able to create very quickly, kind of replicate what you've done. And I'll do one more linear gradient and this time I, I am gonna create a new mask because I'm gonna change something besides just the shadows. Uh, linear gradient, and I'm going to click here and drag. Maybe spread that out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to actually drop the exposure of the corner of the bridge there, or the uh, boardwalk there. Now look at the difference. If I look at before and after. Before, after, everything is drawn much more towards the boardwalk which was the point. So what's next? Well, before we get into the next one, I wanna tell you if you want to see more great Lightroom tips like this for free, head over to schubertphotography.com forward slash Lightroom Secrets and you'll get instant access to a tutorial that I've created called Seven Lightroom Secrets that will completely transform your photos. You'll get access to the tutorial, you'll learn all the Lightroom secrets you need to bring your photos to life, even more than I'm showing you right now. So schubertphotography.com forward slash Lightroom secrets. All right, next up is creating color contrast, okay? So I'm gonna come to this picture of the leaf. Again, I took this in Switzerland. It was off to the side of the lake on uh, concrete um, and it just looked beautiful. And you might think it looks good, but I actually want to take some of the saturation out of the photo, but leave it in the leaf. So I'm going to create a radial gradient just on the leaf. Create my shape. I can always come out here and kind of turn this to angle it more towards the shape of the leaf and bring it right over. And then I don't want to affect the leaf yet. I wanna affect everything but the leaf. So what do we do? We right click, just like we did before, duplicate, invert the mask, and instead of using the light panel this time, I'm gonna come down to the color panel, and I am going to decrease the saturation. Now I'm gonna take it all the way down just so you can see what it does. That's a little too much, it makes it more monochrome, and it's not as realistic on the fade of where I've got my mask. So I'm gonna drop it just, I kind of like to slide back and forth until I'm happy with it. I think that looks pretty good for purposes of showing this to you, okay? And before and after, you can tell it's a little bit more muddier uh, on the concrete, and now the attention is really drawn because we're creating color contrast, um, the difference between saturation and no saturation or less saturation, right? But I also want to increase the saturation and the warmth of the leaf because I think it's a little bit too cool. So again, I'll come up here, right click, duplicate and invert that mask. So I've got my original one that I had on the leaf before I, I changed that. And I'm going to first work with the temperature, the color temperature, because when I slide it to the right, it becomes a little bit warmer. And you can tell if I just click this before and after, that's cooler, that's warmer, that looks better already. I'm gonna add just a touch of saturation, not a lot, because if I go too far, look, it's way unrealistic, right? So I'm gonna add just a touch of saturation, not much at all here. And then if I go to before and after on the whole thing, you can see, it looks a little washed out, a little muddy, and this is the after. The leaf is warmer, a little bit more saturated, and less saturation, because we created that uh, color contrast. 
All right, next up is enhancing a light source that already exists in the photo. So I took this photo in uh, Maui at the top of Haleakala, which was uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful sunset that we got to see up there, okay? So again, I'm gonna use the gradient tool, this time again, a radial gradient, because I want to enhance the sunlight that was already coming from off camera, okay? So I'm gonna click and drag and create a huge circle. And then I'm going to drag this so that the middle point is close to where the sun would be. I know the sun's a little off camera, but I don't wanna um, miss touching some stuff in the photo that I want to affect. So the first thing I'm going to do is work with the light and I want to enhance it. So I'm going to just drag the exposure slider to the right and it's already getting a nice change in brightness there. I might also affect the shadows, just the mountains and everything below that. So it's not just, it's not everything, including the sky. And I'll do a little before and after. You can already see, look at the difference. It already looks like it pops more. You can really see that, that ambient light from, from uh, coming into the, the frame that you're getting from the bright source of the sun outside the frame. But I'm not done. I want to add warmth to this because I feel like it's a little cool and it was sunrise and it was quite uh, a warm color coming off that sun. So if I drag this to the right, look at that. Look at how beautiful that becomes. You can start to see some of the colors even pop on the mountain edge. So I'll do before and after. Look at that, darker, cooler, warmer, brighter. It just really makes it pop. So that is how you can use the gradient tool inside Lightroom. We worked with linear gradient and radial gradient. What's next for you? All right, what I would encourage you to do is watch the playlist I have called Lightroom Tutorials because you're gonna get more of this. And like I said, um, if you go to shooperphotography.com forward slash Lightroom Secrets, you get instant access to seven Lightroom Secrets that will completely transform your photos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, comment, let me know if you have questions or uh, if there's something else you want to see because I want to make content that you really enjoy. Until next time, happy editing.